Conspiracy Theories That Turned Out to Be True During the height of American Prohibition, the United States government committed a heinous act against its own people in an attempt to discourage the sales of illegally made and sold hooch. Sounds like something an internet troll would spew, but no. The government ordered manufacturers of industrial alcohols to be poisoned with chemicals such as methanol, pyridine, and benzene. The government had known bootleggers stealing ethyl alcohol to make their own illegal hooch. This move by, again, the U.S. government, turned every consumer of illegally produced and sold alcohol into an unwitting participant in a game of Russian roulette a game in which their next sip could be their last. In total, over 10,000 people were killed from government-poisoned booze before Prohibition was repealed in 1930. This move once again allowed for the legal production, importation, transportation, and sale of alcohol. Government Mind Control It sounds like something a tinfoil-wearing hat type would claim but the United States government really did attempt to control the minds of its own citizens. Starting in 1953, the CIA began experimenting with powerful mind-altering drugs like LSD by testing their effects on people. The goal was to see if the drugs could alter a user's mind enough to make them susceptible to mind control, to see if they could make Soviet spies defect against their will. The experiments also hoped to use the drug to act as a sort of truth serum to extract information from people. They were also curious if the drug was an effective torture. Initially, participants did so voluntarily, especially in the 60s. However, the CIA also illegally dosed many without their knowledge. While some of these non-consensual druggings happened in prisons, the members of the CIA were not immune. This was illustrated by the case of Frank Olson, who was unknowingly drugged with LSD by his supervisor in the CIA. As a result of his unwitting experience with the drug, Frank took his own life a little more than a week later. Canada developed a form of gaydar. During the 1960s, the country of Canada was so paranoid about gay people that they made an attempt to do something about it. By this, we mean that Canada attempted to develop an actual gaydar, which is exactly what it sounds like. As a way to attempt to weed out homosexual federal employees, the government hired a university professor who developed his own system. The government paid the professor to show federal employees homosexual imagery while his machine monitored the viewer's pupil dilation. Basically, if the machine determined that the viewer wasn't totally disgusted by unexpected pornographic images they were subjected to, the viewer failed because they were deemed to be homosexual. As a result of this professor's machine, over 400 federal employees lost their jobs. This includes members of Canada's Royal Canadian Mounted Police. This is one conspiracy theory that we wish stayed false. Oh, Canada. The American First Lady Who Ran the Country, and it wasn't Hillary. Edith Wilson may not be the most well-known name, but for a time, this former American First Lady ran the United States. In 1919, the U.S. President Woodrow Wilson suffered a stroke. Shortly after this happened, Edith began effectively running the country and making executive decisions on her husband's behalf. Though, to keep things under wraps, Edith officially acted as her husband's steward, someone who shows people to see the president. The reason for this deception was twofold. For one, there was no plan for what would happen if a U.S. president got too sick to lead. As a result, there was no rule of succession, so the vice president couldn't just step in. Because of this, the United States effectively had its first female president all the way back in 1919. The Dalai Lama's Impressive Salary The 14th Dalai Lama has long been one of the world's most respected religious figures. As it turns out, he's also one of the better paid ones, thanks to the CIA's anti-Chinese Tibetan program. Beginning in the 1960s, the religious leader reportedly began receiving an annual salary of $180,000 as the CIA provided $1 million a year of financial support to the Tibetan resistance, which the Dalai Lama was a part. The CIA's end goal was to attempt to destabilize communist China by secretly supporting the Tibetan rebels. Beyond money, this arrangement worked out well for the Dalai Lama, as the CIA also helped him escape Tibet, ruled by China at the time.
John Lennon was under government surveillance. John Lennon is considered one of the greatest musicians in history. But did you know that he was under surveillance by the U.S. government for a time? It's true. It's another example of truth sometimes being stranger than fiction. The former Beatle was behind such iconic songs as I Am the Walrus and Come Together, and he was briefly considered a threat to American national security. This conspiracy was due to Lennon's open stance against the still raging Vietnam War, exemplified by his song Give Peace a Chance. As a result, starting in 1971, the Nixon administration put Lennon under 24-hour FBI surveillance for about a year. They aimed to find enough dirt on the hitmaker to deport him from the United States. Biographer Tim Riley said they considered him a dangerous political leader and that one way they could get rid of him was to simply deport him. The government is spying on you. The government is spying on all of us is one of the most commonly held conspiracy theories. But just because people call you paranoid doesn't always make you wrong. However, not only is it happening in the United States, but it's happening legally. The Orwellian reality is thanks to Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which permits the U.S. government to engage in mass, warrantless surveillance of Americans' international communications including phone calls, text, emails, social media messages, and web browsing. It's been reported that in 2016 alone, government agencies sent 49,868 requests for user data to Facebook, 27,850 to Google, and 9,076 to Apple. While the government claims that this sweeping surveillance power is in the interest of national security in the hopes of finding terrorists, that doesn't mean they aren't legally watching you through your camera right now. I hope you're decent and stop picking your nose. Big Tobacco knew that cigarettes cause cancer. Here's one bound to shock you. It's not just a conspiracy. Tobacco companies really have known for decades that their products are harmful. They just hid the truth. But it doesn't just stop there. Not only have these companies known their products can cause cancer, Big Tobacco has also known that cigarette smoke contains radioactive chemicals. To be fair to these big tobacco companies, they have only known this information since the 1950s and have only hidden it for about four decades. It would take until the 1990s before cigarette maker Philip Morris admitted that it knew about the harmful effects of their products. What is their reasoning for hiding the truth? Well, maybe good old-fashioned greed. Tobacco companies were worried about losing their long-term customers due to the perception that their products were unsafe. Ironically, these same companies seem to have no issue losing customers due to tobacco killing their most loyal customers. As long as the money keeps rolling in, new customers are born daily. Fake Battle, Real War During the Vietnam War, a pair of U.S. destroyers called the Maddox and the Turner Joy were doing some recon in the Gulf of Tonkin near Vietnam when they became involved in a unique international incident. Early reports came out that a trio of North Vietnamese torpedo boats committed an unprovoked attack against the destroyers. The battle gave U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson a legitimate reason to issue retaliation strikes on North Vietnamese naval bases. It basically gave the U.S. license to escalate things in the war. The problem is, is that this initial battle never happened. Not in the way that it was reported at the time. In the decades since, it has been revealed that, in reality, the U.S. Navy provided support for South Vietnamese ship attacks on a nearby island. So when the North Vietnamese did attack the U.S. destroyer Maddox, the North Vietnamese were acting in retaliation, feeling as if they had been very much provoked. So a fake battle led to a consequences in a real war. The Extraterrestrial Mass Grave in the American Southwest In 1983, video game publisher Atari became involved in one of the world's biggest conspiracy theories, which turned out to be true. The company did, in fact, bury millions of unsold copies of the video game in a landfill. The game in question? The officially licensed E.T., the Extraterrestrial Game, that was loosely, at best, based on the movie of the same name. Unlike the movie, however, the game was very, very, very bad. It was so bad, in fact, that Atari decided to cut their losses and bury them forever, out of sight, 
out of mind. And so it remained until 2014, when the exact location of the mass grave was found out and the games were dug up. Remember, in 1983, this was one of the first officially licensed video games. The movie's director, Steven Spielberg, signed off on the game's development. The result was a rushed game meant to be out by the holiday season. It was designed and made by a single person under a severe time crunch. The game was so bad, in fact, that it directly tied to the video game crash in the early 80s that almost killed the entire video game industry at the time. 